So, um, question 21, I gave this, I, give, I guess last time on in spring 2017, pull with the friction. This is basically my one question that combines a lot of aspects of Newton's law problem solving in the context of um, having to deal with only one force, not one force, sorry, having to deal with only one object. And having to deal with only one object actually makes things pretty nice. Uh, the biggest of which is that you don't have to worry about Newton's third law. When you have multiple law process, a lot of times people forget about Newton's third law and make mistakes there. So um, this is being a one object problem kind of bypasses all of that issue. So with that, uh, let me kind of just start right away. It says, um, so that's the description. It's being on the horizontal plane. It's being pulled. And uh, oh, and it's giving me the kinetic friction coefficient between the block and the plane. Um, I think I put that in so that um, this will also be a friction question. <laughs> um, good. So all right, let me start out with the free body diagram. So the free body diagram of the block, um, I, um, so here's my representation of the block, single dot. I, I try to make it as simple as possible because a free body diagram is a problem solving tool. You really don't want to complicate it. You want it as simple as possible. And for this dot is as simple as possible. So um, I need to draw, um, uh, forces, uh, starting with the forces that I identify as being necessary. And one of them, kind of obvious, oh, this might be blocked by the, my video, is, is tension. So I need to draw tension at an angle, T. And once I draw that, then I realize, oh, but that's not the direction that the block is accelerating. Block is accelerating that way. So I have, must have something that's uh, balancing that, that upward component. So I must have the downward force of mg. Now, you could uh, um, easily end there, but, um, um, but there's this odd phrase from the question. It says, assuming that the block remains in contact with the plane, then you should wonder what that means. And what the eventual answer is that if it's remaining in contact, that means that there is no more force. That is not zero, that is positive. So I, I need to draw no more force. Um, even though um, I guess somehow it, the situation could be set up where no more force almost to go to zero, but that kind of depends on what the value of tension is. And I don't know that normal force is zero yet, so I need to write this down. And writing this down reminds me that the question talks about the friction force. So, oh, so I need to draw friction force. So if the block is accelerating to the right, I must have friction force to the left. That's gonna be canceling out some portion of the horizontal component of tension force. Yeah. So that's the free body diagram. And I think you can stop here uh, for the free body diagram. And uh, let me go through the remainder of the question, part B. Uh, I can bring up some of the considerations in that uh, part B. Um, it says find the acceleration of the block, follow the standard strategy, and give your answer in terms of all that. So I've already done the first step in standard strategy, actually. I drew a free body diagram. So that's my step number one. So um, I need to step number two, which is defining my coordinate axis. And um, I, my acceleration is horizontal. So that seems like a reasonable coordinate axis. That's step number two. And I need to step number three, decomposing forces into components. And it looks like I have only one force that needs to be decomposed into X and Y component. And I think I am actually given the angle theta up there, yeah. So let me write down theta so that I can kind of figure out that the, the x component is t cosine theta and the y component is t sine theta. All right, that's a step number four. Finally, step number four, I need to write down the, um, I need to write down the 
Newton's second law equations. I have one object, two dimensions, so I need two equations. So my Newton's second law equations are net force in the x direction. So that would be the x component of tension, T cosine theta minus the friction force is equal to uh, mass times acceleration. And I have the net force in the y direction is equal to normal force um, plus I have the y component of tension force Ty uh, or T sine theta um, minus mg. And since it's not accelerating in the vertical direction, that's equal to zero. All right, so I have two equations and let me count the unknowns. One, two equations. And then my unknowns are, I, um, oh, I know tension, I'm given tension, I think. Uh, uh, I don't know friction force and that told that. I'm asked to find the acceleration, so I don't know that. And oh, and I don't know normal force. Hmm. Three equations, so that means, um, that means I need one more equation. And this is where I hope you kind of think through what forces you are given and how you can get information about that particular force. Because one thing that uh, I haven't made use of is that this is a friction force. And there's actually a, a formula for kinetic friction force. So let me write that down. The formula for kinetic, kinetic friction force is the coefficient of friction times normal force. So uh, looking at this here, okay, this last equation didn't introduce anything we didn't know. We are actually told what the numerical value of, oh wait, we are, okay, so I need to keep that. So yeah, we are, so I now have the third equation and no new unknowns. So three equations, three unknowns, it ought to be solvable. Let me solve that. So one thing I do know is that I want to, get the acceleration of the block at the end, which means what I make sure not to do is I plug in, I solve for acceleration right now. Uh, instead, what I need to be doing is a solving for normal force and uh, frictional force. So, um, all right, let me solve equation three for normal force. Then I have normal force is equal to the, um, Uh, equal to the friction force minus mu. So um, that's three prime. So let me take this, uh, um, uh, take, take this expression for n that I solved and plug it into equation two to get this expression. So n, let me write it down, the friction force over mu plus T sine theta minus mg is equal to zero. I'm trying to solve for acceleration. I don't know the friction force. So what I should do is I should solve this for friction force. Let me just do this in my head. That's gonna be um, mu times mg minus um, t sine theta plug that into the uh, equation one. Let me call this equation two prime. So from equation one and two prime, this is what we end up getting. T cosine theta minus that complicated expression for a uh, friction force, mu mg minus T sine theta is equal to mass times acceleration. So all I need to do is to solve for acceleration. I can, as I do that, I can simplify this a little bit, so I will. Um, I'm just gonna kind of collect, collect like, like terms, but you don't have to. I'm doing it for the fun of it. <laughs> so let me solve this for acceleration here. Uh, one term I'm going to pull out is all the terms dealing with the tension. So I'm gonna have, uh, um, tension over M, 
and I have things under inside the parentheses, cosine theta, that's this one. And I need to be careful with this one here. It's uh, minus mu times minus sine theta. So it's uh, plus mu sine theta. And what this really means is uh, this is uh, actually vertical component of tension that's helping you reduce the um, friction force by reducing this normal force here because this uh, amount of tension force helps you reduce the normal force needed. Um, all right, I did that. I have one more term here that's gonna be minus mu m, uh, m cancels out, minus mu g. And what this is, is it, uh, um, it, it's the friction. It, uh, um, whenever you have larger friction, that's gonna be slowing down your acceleration, for a particular amount of tension and uh, at amount, a particular angle that you're going to apply. So yeah, that's the answer here. Acceleration is that. And once you have this analytical expression that becomes a tool to answer other questions. So, um, so what C is getting at is um, uh, optimizing, maximizing this acceleration with respect to theta. So we'll do that. Let me copy over this expression so that I have it to use. So this is the expression for theta, oh, expression for acceleration as a function of theta. So let me just uh, uh, make that note clear that we are looking at this as acceleration as a function of theta. So the question says, at what angle should you pull so that the acceleration is the greatest? And it's the phrases like the greatest or smallest that I hope uh, uh, that reminds you of the optimization algorithm that you learned in calculus. It goes briefly, it goes like this. If we have some function as a function of x, um, and you want to find where this is extreme, maximum or minimum, then what you do is you take the derivative of the function with respect to the parameter you are looking at, and you set that derivative equal to zero. And there's a, a value of x where this happens. And once you find that value of x, uh, if you're looking for maximum or minimum value, you'll have to plug that back in to find the value of function. Or if they're just asking you at what parameter is it maximized, then uh, then you uh, finding the value of x that does this. That's your answer. So we're going to do exactly that here, except uh, our function is a and our x is theta. So let me just uh, take the derivative of this with respect to theta. And uh, this is technically a partial derivative in that I, of all my parameters, variables, I'm only treating theta as being um, as being something that could potentially change. So I'm going to treat tension, mass, mu, g as constant, which, you know, might be, <laughs> but tension could be a variable tension, but they did say fix the magnitude of tension t. So let me take the derivative. Um, so this term goes away. It's constant with respect to theta. As so I'm looking at these two terms, let me just write down the coefficient first, t over n. Derivative of cosine of theta, I'm remembering my derivative formulas, it's a minus sine theta plus, uh, I have coefficient again, mu times the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. And as part of that optimization process, I want to set this equal to zero. And because we are setting this equal to zero, this makes some of algebra easier. Uh, we can just cancel this out. Imagine multiplying both sides by m over t that cancels that out. So I just have to worry about this adding up to zero. Okay, and let me just write it down. Sine theta, uh, minus sine theta plus mu cosine theta is equal to zero, oh, which means, just gonna do the algebra in my head to get uh, tangent theta is equal to mu. Um, so I move the sine over, divide by cosine, that's tangent theta, that's equal to mu that was left over. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, hopefully that's okay. Uh, if that's confusing you, pause the video, do the algebra by hand on paper and make sure you agree. 
Oh, now, were we given the uh, value of mu? Let me check. Um, we were not given a value of mu. So I think uh, I'm going to make an assumption that the angle theta that will maximize acceleration, that this uh, will be an acute angle. Um, and I think that makes a physical sense. If you are somehow pulling this set, you know, at an obtuse angle, then you are accelerating the wrong way. So I, so I think it makes sense. It's going to be an acute angle. Under that assumption that's well justified, uh, you can say, you can put this through an arc tangent function and say theta is equal to arc tangent of mu. And this kind of reasoning is something that you have to go through every time you use inverse trig function. Because inverse tr trig functions are some of the least well-behaved functions, and um, you want to make sure that the parameter that you're looking for is well-constrained, so that you are working within the well-behaved portion of the inverse trig function, or you are um, just you know making corrections by hand as needed. So let's see. Relatively easy, once you have answer to B. Now, D, um, it's, you know, uh, so my recommendation is you do it from scratch. Uh, so I'm following the standard strategy. Step number one, I'm drawing free body diagram. So free body diagram for this setup is going to be, I'm always going to have gravity, mg. And so I guess I'll always have normal force. And, uh, oh, and I have applied the force of F that's, being, that's going in this direction this time. So it will be drawn something like this way. Uh, let me uh, diagram the angle so that I have a good sense of that. I think that's correct. And finally, with all these forces, because they tell us something about friction, we'll have to <laughs> make sure not ignore friction. I know I love to ignore friction, but whenever a question tells me something about friction, I can't ignore it anymore. So the friction, the role of friction always is to minimize the sliding between surfaces. Here, with all these forces, without friction, the block will tend to slide to left. So uh, what friction will have to do is act to right so that, uh, so that it prevents or reduces the sliding. So I'll have to have friction pointed this way along the surface, um, perpendicular, yeah, perpendicular to the normal force. So, all right, that's my step number one. I don't think I forgot anything. Now, step number two, I have to define my axis. So in the event where friction is not large enough, this will be sliding to the left. So that's going to be my positive x direction, and my y direction will be this way. Uh, that makes sense. So that's my step number two, define the coordinate axis. Step number three, I need to break down my forces into components. So the only force that needs that is my uh, apply the force. Let me draw the component y and x. And this is theta. So my y component is going to be f sine theta. It's the opposite side. And this is going to be f cosine theta. It's the adjacent side. All right, then I think I'm done there. So finally, I'm ready for step number four, which is the writing down of Newton's second law equations. And hopefully once I've done that, I can see what else do I need to completely solve this question. So I have one object, two di directions, dimensions. I'm going to need two equations. So I need the equation for x direction and for the y direction. Uh, I often like to ignore the y direction, but whenever you have friction, you can't really because you need the normal force. So, okay, so x direction. I have the x component of apply the force, f cosine theta. And at this stage, I like to put my directions into equation. So when I see my friction force is going in the negative x direction, I like to say minus f. So that I'm, I'm expecting f to be positive. So if f is ever negative, that tells me something. So that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to write it this way. Uh, it's fine. I think that's the style I've been doing this question. I think I was supposed to write it as uh, acceleration is net force divided by mass. But uh, it's fine. I, we'll just keep it this way for this question. <laughs> the y direction forces, I have, uh, I have three forces. I have to be careful. Normal force, y component of the applied force, and gravity. So normal force, 
in the positive direction, minus the y component of applied force, and then minus mg is equal to zero. That's really the role of the normal force. It prevents acceleration or moving or in that direction. It just keeps the thing on the surface, not digging in, well, not digging in. Okay, so I have two equations, equations one and two. So it's time to kind of count my unknowns so that I will um, so that I will know if I need to go looking for more equations. Uh, if uh, I have only two unknowns, then two equations, that's great. I should be able to solve for them. If I have more than two, then let's think more. But this is the end of the standard strategy. It Note that it doesn't actually solve the problem. It just leaves you in a place where now you can actually start solving the question. So counting my unknowns, I don't think I know the applied force. It's saying you find a certain angle, it does not budge regardless of how much force you push. So F could be infinity, but I, I don't know F. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, I don't know friction. And ooh, acceleration, I think I know because it's uh, not going to budge. So I can say my acceleration is zero. That's useful, I think. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, I don't know normal force. So already I have three unknowns and uh, two equations. And this is where, as you have stated, hopefully you realize, oh, we were given the information about friction force that we didn't use. So let's write it down. Um, so, so friction force, if it's a static friction force, then what we can say is it's less than or equal to uh, mu time the static friction coefficient times the normal force. Now, let's say we are looking for um, we are looking for an extreme case. This theta max being the, the threshold where something begins to happen or begins to not happen. So under that condition, we can say we are looking for a situation where my friction force is equal to that maximum value. So this is my third equation. So I have three equations, um, the three unknowns. I think we should be able to solve it. So let me do it this way. I think, uh, so I've done this question, type of question many times. Uh, you do need to be deliberate when, I, when you are solving for system of equations. One that I think uh, is helpful is if you have an equation, um, actually, I guess here technically you don't know F. So no, a lot of times this is the equation with only one unknown, the normal force. But regardless, I think it's uh, nice to just solve this for normal force, plug it in here, and we can just eliminate normal force that way. And the rest of the question, we don't have to worry about normal force. So let me do that. I'm going to solve this for normal force. N is equal to mg plus f sine theta. And um, I can plug it in here. It's the only equation with the normal force in it. Then I get friction force is equal to mu times those, so mg plus mu times f sine theta. And I can plug that in there to eliminate force f. Oh, and I think uh, I see a trouble and a solution. Let me first write down that one final combined equation and <laughs> talk about both. So I'm, this comes from equation one with all the substitutions. It's going to be f cosine theta minus these two. So minus mu mg minus mu f sine theta is equal to, well, not mass times acceleration, I guess, but zero. Now the, um, the trouble that I was identifying was I forgot to count an unknown, theta. I don't know that unknown, theta. Because we are, we are looking for angle, theta. So uh, it's an unknown. Um, so it might look like we have one equation and two unknowns, and that is right. And um, this is where I think it helps to think a little bit through, because what the question is saying is that the block does not budge, regardless of how much force you push the block with. So I'm just staring at this for a bit. Let me just play with it for a bit. I'm going to, hey, what does it look like when I solve this for f for the time being? 
imagining I have I know theta, even though I don't. So if I do that, I'm going to collect the like terms with the f. So I have f times, you know, and factoring out f, cosine theta, and I have minus mu sine theta. And then I'm going to move this over. So I have plus mu mg. Okay, let me just finish solving for mu. I mean, sorry, f. And I think uh, it will uh, give us something to think through. So solving this for f, I have uh, applied the force f that I would need to apply to be right at the limit of where the block is about to slide. That's what the meaning of this f is. That is equal to mu mg over cosine theta minus mu sine theta. And I hope as you stare at this expression for a bit, um, you get an inspiration <laughs> or, you know, one of those poorly motivated solution steps where, um, it, I don't know, there's no like a systematic way to get at that. So I'm looking at this expression thinking, I'm looking for a situation where it doesn't matter how much force F I uh, apply, F is basically going to infinity. And as you're thinking that, I hope you notice this, that we are dividing by a quantity that could go to zero. So if this quantity is going to zero, that's going to make the requirement on this F to go to infinity. So just going over here and just setting up, okay, let's see if we can make this denominator go to zero. Cosine of theta minus mu sine theta equal to zero. Hey, I think I can move that over. Um, so doing the algebra, it's going to do that in my head. <laughs> you get tangent theta is equal to one over mu. If necessary, I skipped like three or four steps of algebra. So if necessary, pause the video and just uh, work through it carefully, <laughs> step by step. And, uh, and mu, let's see if we are given the value of mu. Um, even if we, we weren't. And actually, the tangent theta being the kind of uh, function it is, mu can be actually anything. Mu can be anything uh, from something bigger than zero to something uh, approaching infinity. We'll still get a value of theta that's an acute angle, less than 90 degrees. So we can say, oh, so theta, it, the theta angle at which this uh, wonderful thing happens where the denominator goes to zero and up required the force F uh, approaches infinity, that angle theta is given by arc tangent of one over mu. That, and that's the answer. And uh, there are other follow-up questions people could ask. Um, like, so what happens if your angle is greater than that? And uh, at some point, you, you're going to have to question some of the assumptions that went into uh, quest problem solving. This is actually technical inequality, you know, all that stuff. But um, yeah, so this is the kind of question where getting to this part, getting up to either this step here or this step here. That's what standard strategy is for. It'll get you to a place where you can start thinking about the setup and start working towards the concrete um, uh, solution. And uh, for easy questions, um, basically all that's left to do is finish the algebra. Uh, for harder questions like this one, you have to think more. You have to uh, be more creative in what kind of things you are looking for. So that's what this is.